We're going to go to Claire now. Again, she is with also another man of the hour, Prime Minister Chris Hipkins. Will this be his last budget? I'm sure Claire will ask him. Here they are. And with us now we have uh, Prime Minister Chris Hipkins with Thank you. Um, you what is his first budget so, as so Prime Minister. But, um, can you tell us, Mr Hipkins, how this differs from a budget that Jacinda Ardern might have delivered? What was the unique take, touch that you might have added? Oh, well, we're different people, but we're still part of the same government. Ultimately, we're focused on delivering you know, a balanced approach when it comes to managing the government's finances. We want to support New Zealanders through a difficult period, whilst making sure that we're making the sorts of investments that New Zealanders expect us to make in, in the future, and also making sure that we're, you know, we're helping to deal with the economic fundamentals, so we're helping to get inflation back down to within its target range, because we know that's one of the things that's really been hurting Kiwi families. It's an election year. You assisted the uh, lolly scramble that goes direct into taxpayers' pockets by and large. Um, what, what do you think this budget will do to improve your chances of winning an election? Ultimately, I think what New Zealanders will see is that we're being a responsible manager of the economy, and I think that that's something that they'll be looking for when it comes to the election. It is a difficult economic environment globally at the moment. We know that the cost of living is really biting into Kiwi household budgets. This budget uh, has avoided the big spend up because we want to make sure that we're getting inflation back down again, because that's the thing that's actually hurting Kiwi households. So the, th the investments that we've made, the spending decisions that we've made, have been targeted to helping ease some of the financial pressure Kiwi families are under, whilst also making sure that we don't make those pressures worse. You um, pitched this in advance as a um, budget that would be aimed at delivering on the cost of living front to New Zealanders. The targeted assistance that you provided is, is very targeted to quite a small group of people by and large. Do you think that there will be a lot of New Zealanders out there feeling a bit over underwhelmed by, by what is on offer? I was also pretty clear it was going to be a no-frills budget. One of the best things we can do to support New Zealanders with the rising cost of living is to make sure that we do get inflation back down again. The global economic headwinds that we've experienced that have kept inflation higher for longer are still with us, and so we've got to do our bit to make sure we get inflation back down. The Treasury forecasts indicate that inflation will be back down to within the target range by the end of next year. That is one of the things that we can do to support Kiwi families struggling with the cost of living, because if we don't do that, if we did a big spend up, that would just mean that inflation would stay higher for longer. But despite not offering that direct assistance, the budget and what it does do already slows the pace of the drop in inflation and marginally, but still nonetheless it doesn't do much to improve the pace at which it was going to drop off. So how do you, how do you justify that? The budget's overall fiscal impulse, which is how we measure whether or not um, the government is adding to inflation or not, the, the fiscal impulse across the forecast period of the budget is still negative. It is still the government actually contributing to downward pressure on inflation. Are you, um, are you, do you, have you basically ruled out from your decision making today offering tax cuts in the next election? I've been really clear all the way along that we'll set out our tax policy well before the election. We haven't done that today. What we've done is we've set out the tax policy uh, that applies for this budget period, which is very consistent with the one that we campaigned on in 2020. We said that we would honour the commitments we made in 2020. We're sticking to that. We'll have new commitments in 2023. People will know that well before the election. Is the trustee the change to the trustee tax rate, is that a uh, step towards introducing more widely wealth kind of taxes, or is it um, what you'll do rather than go any further. What we said in uh, the 2020 election is if we saw that New Zealanders were using trusts in order to avoid paying their share of tax, then we would do something about that. We have seen an increased use of tax by people who are seeking not to pay their fair share of tax, and that's the reason that we made the decision that we did in today's budget. It's been described as a trade-off budget. Uh, Grant Robertson in particular has used that word that things have to be traded off. What, what do you consider had to be traded off? Well, all budgets are trade-off budgets. Ultimately, there's lots of things that governments would like to do. What we've got to do is make sure that we're managing the government's finances responsibly. Um, there's always a laundry list or, or a shopping list of things that ministers and, and politicians would like to see in a budget. Uh, what we've had to do is prioritise very, very carefully. It's a limited range of new initiatives uh, that we know will make a big difference to Kiwi families in terms of the cost of living. It's quite targeted. Um, and then we've made sure that we're, we're, we're seeing our public servants and our public services keeping up with that rising cost. So that we, you know, New Zealanders still need to know that the health system, the education system, is still going to be able to deliver the level of support, the level of public service that they expect of it. We've made sure that that happens. Why is it so hard to get spending, government spending to track down after the um, glut years of COVID? 
Well, as I've indicated, you know, the, the overall fiscal impulse from the government is, is a negative one across the forecast period. That's, that's but we have to. We, but, but if you look at the overall level of government expenditure um, relative to the size of the economy, yes, government spending has been growing, but so has the economy. Now it is a bit, it is a bit larger as a percentage of the economy to what it was when we became the government. But we're doing more things. We're supporting New Zealanders in new ways. Um, but it is not a radical change uh, relative to the size of government spending in proportion to the economy to what it was when we became the government. Do you have a, uh, I guess, a message for the New Zealanders out there who might be looking and thinking, oh, there's not much in it for me? Ultimately, the main thing that's in this budget for New Zealanders who might not see something of immediate benefit to them is that the budget's focused on getting inflation back down again, making sure that the cost of living that they experience on a day-to-day -day basis doesn't keep rising, because we know that that's the thing that's really hurting them and hurting their back pocket. Is one of your aims in this budget to um, make a virtue out of not splashing the cash to try and I guess improve your credentials about being a, a good economic manager? Well this is, the, this is a budget for the times. We have to recognise that the economic times that we're in at the moment are not the right time for a big spend up and a big spend up includes tax cuts. A big, a big tax cut package right now would ultimately lead in higher inflation for longer and therefore higher interest rates for longer. I believe there are some uh, sausage cheese rolls cold in your office waiting for you so we'll let you go. Thank you. Thank all right, let's recap the major announcements from this year's budget, starting with health first. The government will be removing the $5 co-payment for all prescriptions. The cost of that will be $618 million over four years. They'll also be giving more money to help reduce waiting lists. That will cost $118 million and another $100 million to boost primary care. There'll be $63 million for 500 extra nurses and $75 million more for Pharmac. For parents, two-year-olds included in 20 hours of free early childhood education from March 2024 at a big cost of $1.2 billion over four years. That saves eligible parents on this policy about $133 a week. Subsidies for childcare centres rise by 5.3%, costing $260 million over four years. On infrastructure after Cyclone Gabrielle and the North Island floods, telecommunications power and roads, that will cost $6 billion. This is called the National Resilience Plan and it will be set up with that initial funding of $6 billion. The first priority is to repair and rebuild telecommunications, energy and roading after Auckland flooding and Cyclone Gabrielle. Right, on public transport, there'll be $327 million spent for free public transport for primary school aged children, half price public transport for under 25s, that kicks in on 1st of July and will benefit about 774,000 New Zealanders. On to housing, $403 million will expand the scheme for heating and insulation installations for 100,000 more homes. 3,000 new, new public housing places there too. On the economy, inflation is forecast to drop to 3% by next September. Treasury is no longer forecasting a recession due to cyclone recovery stimulating the economy. Unemployment is forecast to peak at 5.3% in late 2024. And GDP is forecast at 3.2% this year, dropping to 1% next year. All right, our fiscal position, let's look at those crown books. We will return to surplus in 2025 to 26. That is a one-year delay from previous Treasury forecasts. Net debt is forecast to peak at 22% in 2024. Now, with any budget, we do get some surprises too. This is them. We will get $34 million in an increase in funding for Te Matatini over a two-year period. That's up from just $3 million a year currently. This means the festival will get more funding than the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra for the first time. Also, there's a new 20% rebate for game development studios, allowing them to claim up to $3 million a year in rebates. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald. Click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here and head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.